We'll look at First Peter in chapter four. First Peter chapter four, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Now, this is actually talking to Christians, to believers. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, uh, lusts, excessive wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Wherein they think it strange that uh, ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead, that is, the living and the dead. For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. You see, we are all dead in our trespasses and in our sins, heading down to hell because our sins have not been forgiven, if that's your case this Arvo. Now I'm here to tell you that you can receive forgiveness for your sins. And the only way is through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as of the oracles of God. Sorry, as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified, through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Uh, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief, yet, um, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it begin, uh, first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? You see, we're all on our way down to hell by default. God does not want to have to punish you, but he will if you die without Jesus Christ as your saviour. He could be your saviour this Arvo, my friend. And if you come to Christ, your soul will be saved. You put your faith in Him, your soul will be saved. But if you don't, your soul will remain in a lost condition, heading down to hell, because we're dead in our trespasses and in our sins. We need to be made alive in Christ. We need to have the new birth. We need to be born again into God's family through faith, in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and for me, that you and I could be saved, that you and I could be in heaven and receive forgiveness for our sins so that we can actually enter into heaven. So we cannot be in heaven if we do not receive forgiveness for our sins. It's absolutely essential that we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be to receive forgiveness for our sins so that we can be saved and in heaven by means of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross. There's absolutely no other way to heaven 
apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. His wonderful sacrifice upon the cross of Calvary that was... He sacrificed himself. He said, No man taketh my life from me. I lay it down on myself. I had power to take it... Uh, to lay it down and I had power to take it up again. This commandment have I received to my Father. So we need to understand there's only one sacrifice for sins and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. He's the one who died on the cross that you and I could be saved, that you and I could receive forgiveness for our sins. Yes, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let him that suffer, let them that suffer according to the will of God, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well doing as unto a faithful creator. See, the Lord Jesus Christ is not only the Saviour, but he's also the creator. See, the Bible says, for God created all things by Jesus Christ. And so we need, need to understand who the Lord Jesus Christ really is. He's the Son of the living God. He's also God in a body. See, God came down in the person of Jesus Christ was clothed in a sinless body that in that body he might taste death for every man that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man upon the cross. So the Lord Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for you and for me so that you and I could be saved, so that you and I could receive forgiveness for our sins. This is what's so urgently needed by each and every one of us, my friend. Salvation, forgiveness for our sins, that we might have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Romans 5, 1 says. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's absolutely no other way of peace. Second uh, uh, Peter chapter 1, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God our Saviour, uh, sorry, for the, through the righteousness of God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. I emphasize that because the Lord Jesus Christ is the only Saviour. He's the only one that can save us from our sins. And we need this salvation urgently, my friend. If you die without Christ, you'll be in hell. That's how serious it is. God does not want to have to judge you, my friend. But he will if you die without Christ as your Saviour. Because he'll be your judge. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and our Lord and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and again this is written to Christians, to believers, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, that's self-control, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Therefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. You see, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He will reign and rule in righteousness throughout all of eternity. One day, 
This time will come eventually. He's not doing that now, but it, it will come to pass. It's written in the Word of God. And so we need to understand, why not bow to the Lord Jesus Christ now? Why not come by faith, put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can be saved, so that you can receive forgiveness for your sins? Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth, Yea, I think it meet or fit as long as I am in this tabernacle, in other words, in this body, uh, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, in other words, the body, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavour that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honour and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. That was the voice of the Father to the Son who is on earth. The Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven's glory and was clothed in a body that in that body, as I said before, he by the grace of God should taste death for every man and be crucified upon the cross of Calvary. You see, Christ died for our sins according to scriptures and he was buried but praise God, the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures. He's a living, loving Saviour, my friend. He desires to save your soul from a long, lost eternity. Why go down to hell when there's no need, my friend? You can be in heaven. And that's exactly what God wants for each and every one of us, that we would be in heaven. Yes, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Father in heaven could never say that about anyone else on this earth. Only his beloved Son, the one who is without sin, knew no sin, did no sin, and in him is no sin. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the mount, in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Uh, for the prophecy came not of old time, Oh, sorry, it came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the word of God was pinned down by, by men who were given these things to say. And the Holy Spirit guided them to write the things down that the Lord wanted them to write down. And so we can fully trust the word of God, the Bible. See, the word of God is... See, the Bible is the Word of God. And what we see in it is basic instructions before leaving earth. That's Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. See, we've got to get right with God. We've got to have forgiveness for our sins. And the only way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to understand we need salvation, we need forgiveness for our sins. And the only way of forgiveness is through the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who died on the cross can be your saviour this hour, my friend. He's either going to be your saviour or he's going to be your judge. What will it be for you? God wants to save your soul this afternoon. But he can only do that if you come and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. What you need to do is this. Come in repentance toward God, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner, 
and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's ever and eternally too late. Remember, for the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. But the good news is this. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great night.